Hello, this is a video explaining how to protect your home network using subnets with PFSense. Now there's many risks of just having one single home network, so I won't go into the benefits of doing that here, but I'll post a link to a brilliant website which will explain many of the reasons why it would be useful, including setup and configuration as well, if you wanna read more about this topic. Now I'm doing this video using, as you can see, the most current PFSense edition at the time of this video. I've also got this installed on a HP Thin Client, specifically the T620 Thin Client, and I'm going to set up another subnet. Now I'm going to assume that you've got PFSense already and configured and working. This video is going to expand on that and configure subnet two using a third network interface. So the system that you're using needs to have at least three ports. So you'll have your WAN taking up one port and then you'll have your LAN taking up the second port. Now you might have a dual NIC and that's all your ports used up. Now in my case, I've got a quad port NIC in addition to the Thin Client's existing NIC card, which has one port. So altogether there's five ports. One is taken up by the WAN, one is taken by the LAN, as you can see in the video here. So that's two ports gone. And then I've got three additional ports that I can use. So those three can create three separate additional subnets. I'm gonna use one of those today. So step one, create the third interface or subnet. So we'll go to interfaces, assignment, and as you can see here, available network ports and an available unassigned NIC is ready automatically. So that's IGB zero. Now I've got an Intel quad port and this is how it will label them. And the existing NIC card, which is already in the HP Thin Client was a real tech and that's abbreviated REO or zero. So available network ports. So we need to click add. So these are the three additional ports that I mentioned earlier in the video. You need to just keep note which one you're installing this on if you've got more than one free, because this is the exact port that you'll need to insert the ethernet cable into, otherwise you're gonna find something isn't working or it's not connecting basically. So I'll go with the default, which is zero, because I know exactly where that is on my NIC card. Click add. This is now called OPT1. Now, step two. We need to enable the new interface and assign a private static IPv4 address. So let's click on it. Enable interface. Check the box. Next we go to static IPv4 and the configuration type. Next, we're gonna go on to static IPv4 configuration. Now here, if you just follow me on the video and then what you can do is later you can make changes. So once you've got a base system which is working, you can rename it, renumber it, do what you like, but perhaps just follow the video for now, including the exact wording and numbering system that I use. So here, I'm gonna enter 192.168.99, the new subnet, dot one. So this would be the IP address for the firewall to serve as the gateway for the subnet. Here, we're done. So click save and check, apply changes. We should get a green confirmation. Okay, so next step, we need to set up the DHCP server for OPT1 and that will automatically assign IP addresses to the devices. Whether you're going to connect this as a standalone PC, laptop, 
or add another switch router so you can add more devices it's still going to be relevant so follow along services DHCP server we now need to click OPT1 we then need to enable the DHCP server on this interface so tick that now for the range again like I said earlier follow me along in this video and then you can make changes later so I'm going to put a range of 192.168.201 and then take that up to 254 okay that's our pool of IP addresses scroll down click save and then we'll need to just confirm that's been done perfect we've got the the green confirmation message now we need to move on to the next step which is to set up the firewall rules to allow internet access only so let's go to firewall aliases we need to make sure that we're on IP which is where it defaults onto which is great then need to click on add and then we're going to call this private IPv4 S. So that's the name. Now we need to select the network as type or networks. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add the private address ranges. Now, if you want to find out more about this, there's a link to private address networks here. It's basically built on the RFC 1918 name, and you're going to see us use the IP address range and the mask bits when we're doing this. So if you want to read more about that, there's a good article on Wikipedia here. So coming back, so the network FQDN, so fully qualified domain name we need to put here. So 192.168.0.0, that changes to 16. Click Add Network, 10.0.0.0, change this to 8. Add Network, final part here. 172.16.0.0 change this to 12 and then that part's done so save apply changes now to create the firewall rules that's going to build upon this so firewall at the top and then we'll go into rules we want to select the right interface so that's OPT1 that we want to focus on here click add button to create the first rule so for address family we're going to use IPv4 and 6 protocol select any for the source and destination we click OPT1 net and same again for destination. For the description, we're going to add in allow access within subnet. So you can remember what and why we may have set this up. Save. That's the first rule done. Second rule, allow internet access. So let's use the next rule here. Address family, again IPv4 and 6, protocol any, source OPT1 net. Now for destination, we check invert match. Single host or alias. 
and then we're going to type in here p and you should see a drop down of the private uh, ipv4s name that we gave it earlier so we just click that one saves any potential spelling errors description allow internet access that all looks good to me so we'll save that apply those changes now we can use this opt1 interface for a subnet in its own entity so any devices within this subnet of 99 can communicate with each other but they can't communicate with another different subnet so this machine and any machines connected to a switch you may then put onto it can communicate within the same subnet of 99 in this case but it can't communicate with any other subnets on the main network so it's just within its same subnet and it can also go out to the internet so that's all set up now